Hey, 42 here. We like to define things by their age, and sometimes it's a very important piece of information, especially when it comes to stuff like dating, safety equipment, or that jar at the back of your fridge. Don't hope in that you will regret it. When it comes to estimating the age of a person, we mainly go on their appearance. But when it comes to ideas, products, or technology, then we often think about things associated with them. For instance, you would think a video games company would have started no more than 50 years ago, because of how new the industry is. But this doesn't always work. So today, just like that time you swiped right on your friend's grandma, we're looking at things much older than you expected. Mario, Link, Donkey Kong, Samus Aran. These are the names of some of the greatest video game characters of all time, as well as many pets and probably a few unfortunate children whose parents thought they would be cool names. As one of the very earliest video game companies, obviously you know that Nintendo has been around for a fair while. But very surprisingly, they were founded in 1889 that's right, a video games company was founded over 120 years ago. Obviously, there was no personal computing back then, there weren't even TV screens. So, was Mario based on a real life game where men dressed up as plumbers and would crush turtles? Well, Nintendo actually started out as a playing card company, set up by Fusajiro Yamauchi. In fact, they are still making playing cards today. In 1956, Hiroshi Yamauchi, the grandson of the founder, went to visit the United States Playing Card Company. He saw that despite them being the biggest card company in the world, they were still in just a tiny office. This didn't fit the grand ambitions he had for Nintendo. He tried out many ventures, and over the following years, Nintendo ran a taxi company, a TV network, a food brand, and even a series of love hotels. So, Zelda could have been a type of rice and Perfect Dark could have been a very gloomy erotic penthouse. But it was Nintendo's shift to toys in 1966 that got them where they are today. They saw the potential of the light gun and how people could interact with a screen. This led to the handheld Game & Watch series, and then in 1983, the Famicom and NES. Interestingly, Mario was actually named after Mario Segal, the landlord of the American Nintendo office who allegedly let them pay their rent late when they were struggling. He also ate magic mushrooms and saved a princess from a giant evil turtle, but that's probably just a coincidence. Emoticons are so common that your mum is likely to just text you chicken legs, snowflake, angry face when she's mad that your dinner is getting cold. But the first emoticons are over 150 years old. Morse code had its own form of abbreviation, with certain numbers being given a meaning so as to save an unnecessary tapping time. 1 was wait a minute, 13 was I don't understand, and 22 was love and kisses, although this became 88 at some point later on. Maybe we needed 4 times as much love and kisses in the world. These aren't really emoticons though. A transcript of an Abraham Lincoln speech in the New York Times from 1862 contains the line Applause and laughter, wink. Like an inside joke for Lincoln. There is some debate on whether this was intentional or just a typo. There was no autocorrect in the time of Abracadabra Lincoln, so there could have been a lot of milkshakes in his spleen. I mean mistakes in his speech. There is no doubt about the emoticons in Puck magazine in 1881 though, since they are clearly labelled. These may have been the first documented emoticons. Scott Fallman, an early computer scientist, is credited as creating the happy and sad emoticons that we know today, since he described them on a message board on 19th of September 1982. The smiley was to indicate jokes, but he also mentioned it is probably more economical to mark things that are not jokes given current trends. Jeez, it's a laugh a minute down in IT apparently. Paperwork used to be a very difficult thing to get to people before the world went digital. And if you wanted something faster than relying on the postman, then you turned to the fax machine. Through the 80s and 90s, fax was really your only option to send reports, contracts, and offensive doodles of your boss across the country in an instant. Although it wasn't until the mid 60s that commercial machines came onto the market, the first ever fax machine was made all the way back in 1843, over 30 years before the telephone. 
And like Alexander Graham Bell, it was another Scotsman, Alexander Bain, who invented the fax machine. Perhaps there is something about the cold, grey Scottish climate that made them find any way possible to avoid leaving the house. The first commercial service was with Giovanni Caselli's Pantelegraph. Senders would use non-conducting ink and write on a sheet of tin. A metal stylus would move across the sheet and would register the current, which would cut out every time it passed over the ink. The pattern of this electrical current was then sent via telegram, and a machine on the other end would print it out by using paper soaked in chemicals, which would react and stain the page when a current passed through it. The biggest difficulty was syncing up the machines, so they used large, heavy pendulums to stop the receiving machine from only printing the first half of the document, and your girlfriend receiving a fax saying, My dearest Suzanne, I found someone else. Yeah, good luck explaining to her that it should have ended with, to fix the leak on my roof. Modern communication has made a lot of old tech redundant, and the language and form is constantly changing. But, as with the emoticon, some of the things that we associate solely with internet culture actually predated by quite some time, and that is very true of the at symbol. The earliest record we have of it is from 1345, in a Bulgarian translation of a Greek chronicle, but its usage was relatively commonplace when recording trade. One theory is that it started as an A inside an E to denote each at rather than just at. If you wrote 10 apples at $2, it might be confusing whether it was $2 for all of them or $2 each, i.e. $20 in total. This symbol could have been used to avoid that confusion. But others think it was for monks writing the Latin AD, a common word, since they were always looking to abbreviate to save on ink and time, as everything was done by hand. It was also commonly used in Spain and Portugal from the 16th century to mean a roba, a unit of weight. These days, many languages have a different nickname for it. The Koreans call it snail, the Danish call it elephant's trunk, the Slovaks call it pickled herring, and the Dutch sometimes call it little monkey's testicle. You do not want to see Holland's browsing history. Many great linguists have come from the second oldest university in the world, the University of Oxford. It has been around in some form since 1096, that's only 30 years after the Battle of Hastings in 1066. You know, the only dates you can actually remember from history class. And here's a fact that will destroy everything you thought you knew about history. Oxford University is actually older than the Aztec Empire, which began in 1325. Only the University of Bologna has existed for longer, being founded in 1088. Although Bologna is older, Oxford is surely the more famous, a name that is respected around the globe. Its alumni include Sir Walter Raleigh, who led a lot of the English colonisation of North America, the great architect Sir Christopher Wren, actor Emma Watson, that bloke who created the internet, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, and authors J.R. Tolkien, Lewis Carroll, Oscar Wilde, C.S. Lewis, and Dr. Zeus. Now, here's a snack that is far older than you'd expect. And I'm not talking about that egg sandwich that you bought in a moment of madness from the gas station. It's popcorn. Corn was domesticated in Mexico some 9,000 years ago, and we have found evidence of popcorn that is 5,600 years old, made by Native Americans down in New Mexico, so it's a true American classic. The oldest existing snack brand in the States is Baker's Chocolate, founded by John Hannon and Dr. James Baker in 1764. It was originally called Hannon's Best Chocolate, but when Hannon disappeared on a sailing trip in 1779, Baker took his chance. After all, life is like a box of chocolates. You eat them all yourself as soon as you get the opportunity. And our final item also comes from an old snack, Spam. But we're not talking about that disgusting pre-cooked canned meat that became popular in the post-war period, no. We're talking about the never-ending stream of annoying messages. It's no coincidence that they share the same name though. The idea comes from an old Monty Python sketch in a cafe, where nearly every item on the menu includes spam, with some baked beans thrown in there somewhere. When early internet chat rooms began, some users would repeatedly type spam in order to shift a line of text off screen, since you wouldn't have the ability to scroll through conversations like we do now. So it became the common word for sending out unwanted messages to many people with no thought as to who would be reading them. 
But this concept was not unique to the world of the internet. In 1864, many British politicians were deeply irritated at a telegram that many of them received. A message from Messrs Gabriel of 27 Harley Street that gave the opening times of their dental practice hoping for more business, but none of them would bite, and we've not smiled kindly on spam ever since. That's about it for today. I need to go now as I must reply to Mr Jacande's email. He says there's six million dollars waiting for me in a trust account and all he needs from me to release the funds is a small deposit of 1%. I can't miss this opportunity. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more 42. There are hidden oil wells all over Los Angeles. These secret oil wells are hidden right in plain sight. Some are next to schools and shopping malls. He had simply gotten drunk at a local pub and was walking home past the palace at 7am when he decided to go for a stroll through the halls of possibly the world's most famous residence.